welcome to this week's news bulletin from the Christian Institute. Lord Carey has accused Britain's courts of consistently applying equality law to the disadvantage of Christians. The former Archbishop of Canterbury commented that, in a country where Christians can be sacked for manifesting their faith, are vilified by state bodies, are in fear of reprisal or even arrest for expressing their views on sexual ethics, something is very wrong. Lord Carey made the remarks in a written submission to the European Court of Human Rights ahead of the cases of four Christians who say the UK has failed to protect their religious liberty. One of those cases heading to Europe is that of Lillian Liddell, a Christian registrar who was disciplined for her stance on civil partnerships. The hearings are due to start in September. Imams in Glasgow have told Muslims throughout Scotland not to vote for any local election candidate on the 3rd of May who supports redefining marriage. The news will trouble the leaders of major political parties, all of whom have indicated their personal support for the plan. A statement issued by the Council of Glasgow Imams said, We wish to inform both Nicola Sturgeon and the First Minister Alex Salmond that we are deeply unhappy and vigorously opposed to the proposed legislation for same-sex marriage adding, we will be urging our community from the pulpit to make sure that any person they consider voting for does not favour the proposed legislation. The SNP is hoping to gain control of Glasgow City Council in the upcoming elections, with Councillor Alison Hunter promising to deliver a fairer deal for local families. The SNP-led Scottish Government is currently analysing responses to its consultation on marriage, but has previously stated that it favours redefining marriage. A spokesman for the government said, While we have expressed our initial view, we have given an assurance that all opinions will be listened to. No final views have been reached. Meanwhile, Deputy First Minister Nicola Sturgeon has been presented with another petition against redefining marriage at her local surgery. It was organised by a group of Roman Catholics who gathered 1,000 signatures from five local churches in her constituency last weekend and campaign group Scotland for Marriage, which also backs traditional marriage, is adding to the pressure on the Scottish Government with its petition, which now has nearly 19,000 signatures. If you live in Scotland, you can add your name by simply filling in this short online form. The Government is expected to announce details on the outcome of its consultation in the next couple of weeks. Paganism has been included in an official school religious education syllabus for the first time. Cornwall Council has told its school that pagan beliefs, which include witchcraft, druidism and the worship of ancient gods, should be taught alongside Christianity, Islam and Judaism. Under the new guidelines, children as young as five would begin learning about standing stones such as Stonehenge, and at 11, pupils would explore modern paganism in Cornwall. But Christian campaigners are alarmed that what was once regarded as eccentric is gaining official recognition. The Christian Institute's Mike Judge said, Religious education is squeezed already. Introducing paganism is just faddish and has more to do with the political correctness of teachers than the educational needs of children. However, Neil Burden, the Council's Cabinet Member for Children's Services, said that the move would give children access to the broad spectrum of religious beliefs. A new service which will allow morning after pills to be delivered by courier within London is being launched. The service, which costs £20, requires users to complete an online form which includes them confirming they are 18 or over. It is then checked by a doctor, with the pills being delivered in as little as two hours. But Norman Wells from the Family Education Trust warned that it is too easy for abusers of underage girls to register on the site given a false name and medical history and then to order the morning after pill on behalf of their victim in an attempt to conceal their crime. The co-founder of the online service, Amit Kuti, defended the scheme, saying that there were barriers in place to stop young people getting hold of the drug. The morning after pill can cause an early stage abortion. A copy of St John's Gospel, which is the oldest surviving intact book in Europe, is set to remain in the UK after being bought by the British Library. Known as the St Cuthbert Gospel, the dark red leather-bound book was placed in the saint's tomb on Lindisfarne, Northumberland, in the year 698, a few years after his death, 
but it was over 400 years later before the book was rediscovered when the coffin was opened after being moved to the site of Durham Cathedral. The book, which was written in Latin, was recently bought by the library for £9 million and is in remarkable condition for its age. Yeah, this is a, a manuscript, a handwritten book, and um, the words on the page are almost as clear as the day that the scribe wrote them. The British Library has put the book on public display and it will spend time in both London and Durham. And finally, Premier League footballer Kieran Richardson has spoken this week about how he has found God since joining Sunderland. The England international revealed he has been a Christian for four years and said, I was saved in Sunderland. It's changed my life for the better through Jesus' death. People need to know that if they feel they can't talk to anyone, the church is here for them. Last December, Kieran, who is now Sunderland's longest serving player, decided to go public with his faith by showing off a vest proclaiming, I belong to Jesus, after scoring against Wolves. The former Manchester United star is planning to share his life story and testimony at a special church event in Durham next month. Well, that's all for this week. For more information and regular updates on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time. Goodbye.